very, very special event today. We are so honored today to uh, acknowledge, as always, our traditional owners and caretakers throughout uh, the Pueblo lands that we are residing on, along with the rest of the country. We'd like to acknowledge the caretakers and ancestors where you're beaming in from, uh, elders past and present, and we are all future ancestors uh, sitting here today together. We'd like to uh, take this time to acknowledge uh, traditional owners and ancestors in these lands that we reside on as always. Indigenous Ways is dedicated to bridging cultural exchange with people globally. We believe in equality. We believe in walls of separation being taken down. Uh, we believe that we can all walk together as allies and learn from each other so that we can be not be in front, not be behind, not be beneath, not be above, but we can all walk together, all walk together with the beautiful five-fingered people that we are, and all of our blood is red. So we started our virtual events, as m many of you know, April of last year, and we have since been able to have over 75 presenters and performers, and we've been able to have ASL interpreters to make communication access available as well for our deaf and hard of hearing family members. And for that, we're very grateful. I'll just let you all know, we are here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and every third Saturday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We are always on the lookout for amazing extraordinaires that uh, present themselves with um, thriving in purpose and uh, mission to be innovative and take their creative arts into directions that is a path all their own that we can all learn from and we're very grateful for that so today we have a very special guest of honor today we have with us gina breedlove there is so much to say about gina breedlove so I'm going to go ahead and let Gina tell us about Gina. Gina, thank you so much for joining us today from um, New York. <laughs> I believe you're in New York. I'm in New York today. Yeah. I've been uh, doing some itinerant medicine woman work and getting in my car <laughs> and driving from place to place. Um, thank you so much, Tash. Thank you, Elena. It's so good to be with you both again. It's been a long time. Um, and I'm quite appreciative of the space that you've created and the grace that it brings. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, what to say, I am, um, I'm a vocalist and composer. I am a medicine woman of sound. I use uh, sound to move energy through the body. Um, and uh, whether it's music or a tone or my bowls, um, I guide folk in circle work and one-on-one -on -one work to moving grief through the body, particularly. Um, so many of us um, have been separated from our traditions around how to move grief through the body. And so it is my privilege and honor uh, to uh, bring back some root medicines uh, to, for folk to reclaim themselves in these practices um, and to understand that grief is as natural as laughter, as breathing, and it needs a place. So that's the root of my work. That's beautiful. It sounds to me like uh, what we heard last week with our sister Taz, where she said, I'll paraphrase what I interpreted is it's okay to not be okay. Yes. It's okay to not be okay. And mm -hmm. I think that's really important for us to uh, realize that uh, we can welcome in feelings, all feelings, grief, sadness, laughter, happiness, and not try to run from it, you know, through substance abuse or eating or shopping or, you know, just be with it, you know. And I, I think that's something that a lot of people are interested in learning how to be with just being with the, the realness of self and the feelings that come with it and not escape from it or feel the need to escape from it. Yes. I mean, you know, particularly in these COVID times, right? Okay. There's the constant backdrop 
of COVID-19 and the grief that it brings and elicits and the ways in which it's impacted communities, of course, some communities more than other communities, and um, and how that moves in the body and how that energy can get stuck in the body um, if we are not caretaking ourselves. Yeah, that, that, that brings a whole new uh, topic of trust trust in the healing modalities that are inherent in our bodies mm -hmm. in our minds and how to access those channels and open them up so that those rivers can flow for the healing as opposed to just being stuck and snowballing with right. each incident that happens that's not okay that we can call intergenerational trauma or um, grief and all that kind of stuff but just to find a way to let it have uh, a river or even a bridge to let it pass. Um, yes. Thank you. Our body sure. wisdom and also, you know, our traditions, um, a reclamation of our traditions as well. So, yeah. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. Well, do you want to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself or would you like to offer a song first? Well, um, I do have a song. <laughs> I have a song to share um, uh, that I'd love to share with you. Uh, and so I... Um, you know, in these COVID times, too, we're not able to have a companyist, really. Uh, so I've gotten a little more adept at working with a track. And so um, this song is called Breathe. underwater on this path as a child of the moon though the mind wants to stay in some yesterday your spirit is one with the wind in the trees and everything everything we are learning to fly without moving through the eyes of the angels with wings though the voice in the well cries there's comfort in hell your spirit is one with the wind and the trees and everything mm, everything losing yourself to be more yourself that's what the healers they say when you come to the shore at the end of your day to pray we are learning to dream with eyes open as we vision a world without greed all of us bleed when some human need goes unanswered love is everything just everything Love, 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 love. Wow. <sighs> okay, everybody, just take a moment and let's just breathe. <sighs> 
breathe in that healing voice that just came through the airwaves. I felt it. And I have to admit I had to fight those tears because I don't want to be sitting here bawling my eyeballs out. Mm. But that was powerful. That was powerful. I could feel it. I could feel it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Where did you learn how to sing like that, Gina? Oh, um, hmm. <laughs> you know, like you, I've, I've been uh, on this journey for a moment or 17. <laughs> and I, just, I think really um, for me, um, Tash, it has been a practice of allowing, you know, um, yeah, I don't worry about how things are going to sound or come out anymore you know i used to be so concerned about that i mean i think that's part of youth you figure things out right. um i think every offering is a perfect offering if there are cracks in it or um it feels a little brittle or raw that day that's what you have that day you know um so i think that's part of it i just surrender i'm in a practice of surrender yeah and so i i do understand that surrender allows your spirit and heart to be seen and so, and the truth has a sound, you know? So, yeah. I, I, I could, I could feel beauty and grief in that song. And I'm not sure if it's my own grief or if it's a collective grief of what I'm feeling of what's going on globally. Mm -hmm. But I think it might be a combination of all of that. But when you're talking about the spirituality of imperfection, Yes. I think about my grandmother who passed away last May at 98. Wow. And she made this rug in 1956 that was, I kid you not, as big as this wall in this room. Wow. And she actually used, a, I think, a pinyon tree as a weaving loom on the mountain from her own sheep's wool. She got the plants to do the dye and it was kind of a geometric design that if you look at it from afar, you could actually feel like you were tripping on LSD or something, just mm. go into this hazy movement of, you know, purple haze or something. But it was my grandma's uh, concoction that she made from the earth, from the, the sheep on the mountain. And some of you have seen it on my Facebook page. I always post it with my Oh my goodness, I would love people. to see that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there. But one part, if you go to the museum, uh, the Navajo Arts and Crafts in Winter Rock and walk in there and get special um, entrance into where it's hanging. You have to get special entrance to even go look at it. I mean, that's how sacred it is. Of course, mm -hmm. that's my grandma. I'm so biased. I'll admit it. But if you look at it and study it, there's some actual purposeful um, um, non-conforming designs in it. And I asked I asked uh, my mom or my aunt, I said, what's up with this? It kind of goes off right here and said, oh, exactly what you said, Gina. It's like when the Navajo traditional people make these beautiful rugs, not only from the elements, but from their sheep, they purposefully leave a spot on it imperfect, like it's a sacred thing. Yeah. And like purposefully make it imperfect. I mean, go figure. I mean, that's like really intense. So um yeah, tell us a little bit about the sound healing, because I feel like I healed from that song you just sang. Well, sure. I mean, much like um, what happens alchemically and, and on a cellular level when you and Elena sing, right? When you all are touring and bringing your medicine to people, um, I hear the same things. You know, it's soothing, it's calming, it's enlightening, it's, um, it's beautiful, you know? Um, and so sound, of course, is alive. It's vibration, you know? Sound is... Sound is science, you know, the power of sound, the power um, of sound waves to shift and move a thing. You know, sound is used in in certain um, medicinal practices and experiments around um, the breaking up of cancerous tissue, you know, the shifting and um, remaking of, of um, a cell that's um, considered rogue in the body and needs help and needs guidance. And so it's like trying to vibrate the cell back into a resonance of health. And so it's much the same 
uh, presence, you know, doing that with the sound of your voice or with a bowl or some folk do it with drums and uh, or the didgeridoo, um, humming, um, choral singing, like making this sound and filling the body up with this vibration and marrying it with the intention to bring wellness, you know, or uh, ease to someone's body. Um, and so um, that's, you know, that's become my life's work. And, and it's all one thing for me, if I'm having a concert or if I'm laying over someone's, um, if I'm bending over someone's body that is lying on my table and sounding into their heart, their actual beating heart or their liver or their, or their lungs, you know, or it's just sounding into the body wherever I intuit that um, grief might be hiding out or, or rage, you know, because if you think about it, we don't generally stifle our joy. I mean, unless, of course, it's, it's dangerous to show it. And there are some circumstances where folk, you know, just stifle everything, of course. Um, um, you know, but and most of us are graced and well most of us that's a big word but there are many of us who when we laugh we can laugh out loud or laugh big and let that fill up the space but when we have to cry we swallow it you know we it gets caught right here and we check it mm. and there are myriad reasons for that you know um i find that um it's different in um in, in these sort of cultural um uh, lines of demarcation, so to speak, you know, in my community, the African American community, um, generally, you know, it will, I'll just speak to my neighborhood growing up, like, you know, n there was no, none of my peers, none of my friends, there was no household that I visited, where there was any time for grief, you know, mm -hmm. it was keep it moving, figure it out, toughen up, um, you know, if you're, if you're sensitive, the world will kill you, the world will eat you. Um, you know, it's like, um, you know, these, these are the things that we were weaned on, which really is this fear of softness or vulnerability um, for all the reasons we know why for the African American person's journey in this country, right? And, um, and the danger with vulnerability or exposing yourself, you know, and so, and so I have a whole community of folk that I know that have difficulty with the expression of grief. You know, it's a weakness or it will slow me down or I'll be so devastated or immobilized, you know, all of these things. Um, and I know that this energy creates illness in the body. How could it not? Mm. You know, how could it not? It gets stuck. It gets caught um, in my spirit. I it ossifies. It becomes something that is brittle and dry and, you know. And folks don't have access to their sound, you know. Um, and so uh, the sound healing for me um, is um, tend amount to liberation and freedom work. Right? Um, I love it. It is. I'm obsessed with freedom. I'm obsessed with my freedom, your freedom. And in this country, we have a lot of fake ass freedom, <laughs> you know, as we know. But I'm obsessed with, with freedom. And for me, in this moment, because it keeps changing and expanding, mm -hmm. um, that is, I equate that with the sound of your own voice in your body. You know, who owns your narrative? You know, who owns how you feel about yourself? Where is that fed? Where is that spring, so to speak, that you are nourishing yourself from? Um, and I'm consciously using that word, even though you're drinking something that's poisonous, you know, but you are drinking from this spring that says that you're not worthy or um or you're a, you know all these you know all of the things that we know that rises unbidden to folks minds when they see us when they see black and brown and indigenous people because of the construct that we're all inside of because we're all working on decolonization and healing from the disease of whiteness you know and i don't mean like white people per se i'm talking about the disease of whiteness I which is you know a kind, i say that for the you know for the back row, <laughs> I'm saying that for whomever, you know, um, we are all healing from it. It is in the fabric, it's saturated in everything and everything has been designed to keep that in place, right? And so with sound in my circles, um, I teach people, I guide people and I share practices on how to free up your voice in your body and how to own your narrative, you know? Absolutely. Yeah.
thank you so much for saying that. And I was reading, uh, I, I'm actually, I'm currently reading uh, Isabel Wilkerson cast and yes. uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it piecemeal. So I'm taking my time reading yeah. it. Now, this is one book. I don't want to let any empty words go into my head with this book because that's how intense it is. Yes. But I just come to find out that word you said, white, uh, I'm French and Irish. That's how I like to say. My father was French and Irish. My mother is full-blood Navajo. Dene mm -hmm. is our original name for the people of the Navajo. Mm -hmm. uh, but that word white is a social construct. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. something that's conditioned into us to say, oh, I'm Navajo and white. But actually, you know what? I'm Navajo, French, and Irish. That has a nice sound, a nice prosody, a nice cultural ramification to it that goes back to something I know nothing about in Europe. Mm -hmm. I think that's where those people came from, my ancestors, you know, I mean, that's how much mm -hmm. I know, right? Not mm -hmm. that much, but it's the genetics are in me, it's in my DNA. But uh, my cultural construct is conditioning with Navajo because I was raised by a single mother, my mother on the Navajo Nation. So right. it's just interesting that uh, this is all coming to light now with people like Isabel Wilkerson that's doing the research and taking the hundreds and thousands and thousands of hours into just, you know, going deep into all of this, into the into the deep residues of the, the historic prevalence of this word and then putting it out in a book that's understandable for us to, to really uh, comprehend. So that's really interesting you say that. So thank you very much. So I'm really curious about your uh, Gina Breed Love Community Sound Healing Circle that you've going you've got going on on two twenty eight, what on uh, February twenty eighth? What is that about, and can we join it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I um, well, I started doing a series um, in um, connection with an organization that I work with, Acorn Center for Restoration and Freedom, that actually is located in Georgia, and um, we co-produce a series. Um, the steward of Acorn, who is a friend of mine, Emmanuel Brown, and myself. Um, and it started around wanting to create a space for folk to have respite um, during the election season. You know, we will be recovering from um, number 45, the sound of that voice, that his voice, uh, I think for many years, right? And, um, and so we wanted a space for folk to come um, to you know, move fear, to have conversations around fear, uh, because fear is another, um, um, uh, you know, energetic that occurs that is not encouraged to speak about. Because if you talk about your fears, then you're not strong, or you're not being hopeful, or, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not of service to the body. Fear is real. And we're in this place, I mean, we're in this place in our history, in our history, in our time, where fear is rather constant right now it's like you know there's so many places where we turn and all of a sudden there's this fear rising in our bodies you know so um our freedom sanctuary is what we call the series and i am the anchor and the guide and um there's a registration link that i gave to you all are welcome it is um, uh, BIPOC centered, so Black, Indigenous, People of Color centered. And what that means is um, in any sharing that is done, we, we presence the people of color first in the group. And we ask any white folk that come and we refer to them as allies, like you're welcome to come, but step back because this space is not um, tailored for you, but you're welcome. So we're trying to create these rooms that reflect um, America, but then the shift is, um, but you're the, but whiteness is not the center of it, you know, of these healing rooms, you know, um, and um, it's a six week series. I did it um, up until the day before election day, two days before election day, and um, and I um, and I'm starting up again on February 28th. So it'll run from February 28th to. Um, April 4th on Sundays uh, um, on the East Coast time from 3 to 4, about 4.15. Mm -hmm. It is a Zoom format, but you must register to get the link. And it's donation-based, so no one is turned away uh, for lack of funds, right? Um, and there's absolutely no cap on what you can give, you know, wow. um, because money is energy. So a dollar or $10,000, you know, um, whatever the offering is, it creates an opportunity for all to receive. That's how I know. Um, that's what I, my understanding of money is energy. I, um, 
and I, I we created that series as well because I'm not doing as many private sessions anymore. And I have folk that reach out to me for private session work all the time. So this is an, an opportunity for all folk to receive in community. Um, my private session work has been focused on um, leaders and holders, uh, particularly in the movement for Black Lives. Um, mm -hmm. But folk who are doing uh, liberation and freedom work, that is where my, my medicine is centered right now. That is so awesome. I am definitely going to put the word out for you because I think I know your medicine is real. So anybody out there, if you're interested right below me, you can see uh, where you can sign up for this uh, beautiful movement that's happening, the Freedom Sanctuary. Uh, please check it out. And then in the chat box, we also have uh, to the right of the screen at Gina Breedlove Community Sound Hilding Circles on 228. Uh, in a donation base, which uh, makes it very accessible. And uh, at this moment, I'd love to ask you if you would be willing to sing us another song. Oh, sure. Awesome. Yes, it would be my grace. Um, uh, let me um, just pull that up here in the wobulous world of technology. This is a song about coming together. This is a song about how word I am word and I know how to serve. This is a song about now. Somebody told us to love one another. Quiet the mind and be still. Now is the time to believe who we are and marry your soul with your will. And I say, ah, ha, ah, ha. we are the ones who will heal. Now is the time to believe who we are. Remember, only love is real. This is a song about healing the healer, opening hearts with a sound, changing the world with all of our hands, together touching the ground. And I say, I ha, I ha, we are the ones who will heal. Now is the time to believe who we are. Remember, only love is real. And I say, I, 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 Again, everybody just take some deep breaths and let's breathe in this beautiful message from Gina to our beautiful three-dimensional communication, our gorgeous interpreter, Zoel. Gina's oh. amazing, amazing healing voice of love. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Thank you. That's very, very beautiful. There's so much I want to ask you. I want to know about these workshops that you do. Like, how do you teach them? How do you ins get inspired and, and, and like that kind of movement? Can you talk a little bit about some of your teachings? I can. I can. You know, I work, um, I work a lot. Um, well, I work primarily with uh, my voice. And, um, and helping folk to use their voice. Um, and there's, it, it's not about, you know, thinking you have a nice voice or um, a voice that, that, you know, a singing voice or any of those things. It's about sound. And I have been working actually um, with some colleagues of mine 
who are hearing impaired and speech impaired around vibration, right? Around vibration in the body, you know, around the heartbeat in the body, around creating sound in the body. Um, and so um, that's a new project that Spirit is guiding me um, because vibration is a living thing. Um, in fact, as I was sharing with you before we opened, the first teacher, because I couldn't find a teacher, Tash, like I had this, I was looking for a teacher. I was like, oh my God, I, would, I was being called and guided um, and I knew I needed you know, someone in, in, in this living realm, because I was being guided by spirit, but I needed some direction in the, um, the realm of the flesh and I couldn't find anyone. And, um, and, and, and then I found Joseph Rael, um, who um, I, um, I know that, he, I don't I remember where he was born, but I know that he grew up um, on the Picuris Pueblo, Picuris. near Taos. Yeah. Am, I sp- am I saying it right? Picur- Picuris, Picuris. Picoris, yeah. Picoris, Picoris, Pueblo. And I found his book. <laughs> it jumped out at me one day. I was so excited. There was being and vibration, right? I was at someone's house and I looked and I was like, oh my, oh my God. And I opened the book and this was, this had to be. I started doing this work. Actually, I found the book after I started doing the work. I started doing the work. I'd done the work of sound on my own body humming and sounding and creating safe space in my body because my physical body was not safe Ooh. for myriad reasons. And um, I, but intrinsically I would sing to myself and hold myself with my voice. And then I started doing it for other people when I lived in New York, before I moved out of New York, I did it, you know, and, um, but then I found this book, you know, and I opened this book and there it was talking about sound as a living, vibrant, um, constant thing, you know, and how vibration, how everything is energy and everything is alive. Um, and, um, and I started reading everything by Joseph Rael that I could find. And then I came to find out that he oh, created these sound chambers across the, the, the globe. Um, and, um, and there are some in the United States and there are some, you know, just around the world, these sound chambers, because he was guided by spirit to create these places that are sonically perfect, as perfect as it, as it can be, that would catch sound and then bounce it back into the body. And so if we go in and circle, right, or imagine bringing your guitars in there, or, you know, you know, or Elena, some of her instruments and playing in a place, you know, where it was just going to be a resonance chamber and all the ways that the body can heal the spirit can heal you know and the ways that we can take flight you know um and so i um i studied this book and i started to bring and these concepts and this understanding of um how i could sing a spirit home right um and then i you know and so it's just been you know it's been over 20 years and um and so my practice has evolved and it's become about how folk can care for themselves mm. you know um because we are living in these all of a sudden times ah. yes. we are and you turn a corner and all and all of a sudden you're pulled out of your body because of what you're seeing or what's happening um and how do you bring yourself back you can sing and sound and vibrate yourself back into your body. Um, and so, and, and that's where these circles began and rituals and, and, t- and sometimes they're rather intense. You know, I, um, in the tradition of, there was um, a, an incredible healer, brilliant leader guide um, around grieving and pulling grief out of the body named Subanfu Somme. And um, Sis Subanfu, I went to her workshop about seven years ago. She did grief rituals all over the world. And she was from Africa. She was from um, Burkina Faso. And her tribe was of the the, the Dagar, Dagar tribe, Dagara, I believe. Oh, forgive me. Um, my brain cells are quieting. It's been a long uh, day. But... I hear you. I hear you. This is our She's third phenomenal. She is our phenomenal. Fr- yeah. She's an ancestor now. Um, and um, But in some of those traditions, sometimes my grief circles look like people publicly grieving in circle with each other and witnessing each other um, because it feels powerful and important. Um, and so, but I have my, one of my bowls. Oh, gosh. That I want to share. Please, please. 
I have these bowls, these gorgeous crystal bowls that um, I've incorporated in my practice. Um, and these bowls are tuned to um, the chakra body, which is, as we know, this inexhaustible yogic science that is not my lineage, um, but I honor it and I'm grateful for it. This map of the body. Um, I would sound into the chakra body, the chakra body before I knew what a chakra was. <laughs> that just, that's how I'm like, you know, before I had any idea. Um, but spirit would guide me up the center of the body with sound. And so this particular bowl is tuned uh, to the heart chakra, right? Which is... What, the sound f suddenly went out. The sound went out. We lost the sound. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me, Chris? Okay. Uh, something happened with our gorgeous Gina. She should be coming back in. Um, in the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you all of you for being here today this is an amazing number we have 18 participants in today for a saturday afternoon where i always say we're com we're, we're uh, competing with uh, uh the El uh, elton johns and justin bieber's out there with this platform so if we can get more than 10 people on we're very happy so thank you for being with us we kind of like the intimacy though to be honest with you um yeah i well, while we're waiting for her to come back on, you guys, I'm going to go to a commercial break. And oh, here she is, actually. Okay. I was going to start popping out with some chanting myself, but here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Gina, 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 here she comes. Yeah, that's one of the unfortunate aspects of, oh, it looks like we've got a backup iPhone. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can come on. Hi, I'm not okay. able to start my, oh, it's there I am. There you are, yay, Hello. backup, woo, iPhone. <laughs> Thank you, iPhone. My Lord. Gratitude okay. to the iPhone. So here I am. Okay, I'm back. Um, I was sharing my bowl um, with you. Can you hear now? Oh, perfect. There it is. <laughs> ah, technology. Yes. Hmm. And then sometimes, often, marrying the voice with another sound. intention being bringing some ease to the heart and guiding folk to listening you know and the mind is such a wily beast as we know so sometimes the guiding has to happen again and again I mean much like we guide small children to task sometimes the mind is like a small child but inviting folk to come into a space where there's some rest. And then I invite folk to use their voices and to join, you know, get in where you fit in. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's making sound. And we always set an intention for the work. And so intention and sound is prayer. Ashe. Wow, that's 
that's medicinal for sure. Mm. If we can just let and l allow and be. Before I ask you the last question, I just want to share a really short story, and I hope I'm okay to share this and that I don't upset anybody. Mm. But uh, my beautiful partner, Elena, decided to use her voice to put a job on an, a life on an island in Australia on sabbatical mm -hmm. and a teacher's job on sabbatical and get a one-way ticket to America mm -hmm. with a guitar and a backpack strapped to her back. That's right. And she believed in the sound of her voice to bring the power of love to peoples. Mm -hmm. And guess what? She showed up at the UN and she met Vicki Downing from Tezuque Pueblo and Vicki Downing, had, her had this heart thing. It's a sign like this. It's a heart, uh, it's almost like a telepathic heart connection that's beyond the mind, but it's the heart, it's the body, it's the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. And they just knew that they needed to merge and travel together. And that's how Elena got to New Mexico. I love it. And uh, it was just with that, I wanna share love and you know, I've heard over the years that love conquers all. Mm. It's okay to be angry and have those human emotions, but man, just do the full circle and just come back to love. That's what I've done. I'm, I'm in tears today. Inside, I'm crying. They're healing tears. So thank you so much, Gina, for joining us today. I know you've got a busy schedule. And I just want to say that I really admire people like you, and Elena and mm -hmm. our beautiful interpreter, Cress, that have taken their skills and their talent and made made their own roads with it. Mm -hmm. Like these guys work for nobody, okay? And that means you, you work for spirit, you work mm -hmm. in the belief of what you're doing because you found your modality, which is your healing voice, uh, Cress, Elena, they don't work for nobody. They make their own pathways for us to all be a part of this big circle called the collective of humanity. Yes. So I just want to say I admire all of you, all of you people out there that don't have to clock into a clock, but that you make your own pathways and make it work because it's one thing to have a voice. It's one thing to be able to know sign language. It's one thing to know how to sing. But it's another thing to th put it into a business plan and strategize it and come out with a beautiful way to get out there and make it work, man, to survive, to be able to pay bills, to be able to uh, support yourselves and the people you love around you. So everybody that's with us today, please join Gina Breedlove for her beautiful session, her healing circle that's going to be the BIPOC-centered event on 228. Okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can find Gina Breedlove. You can find her because she is on probably every single social media site that you can think of. Right beneath me, you can see where to find Gina. It's kind of small font. I apologize. We should have made it a little bit bigger, but I'll just tell you what it says. It says B-I-T dot L-Y dot Our Freedoms Sanctuary. So uh, if you can come in and be a part of this collective healing, please do. And if you can donate, please do, because we want to keep Gina on the road and sharing her love and spreading her message of healing. Because believe me, I think we are all broken souls on some level and we have a right to heal. We have a right to heal. That's my that's what I'm saying. We all have a right to heal. So let's do it, people. And uh, I just want to share with you our beautiful Lakota sister, Cody, is with us today. And she says, uh, let me see, Cody says, uh, she's going to check out your website. She says, you're so awesome and beautiful. And our beautiful sister, Missy, is saying beautiful healing voice and energy. Mm -hmm. And um, the last question I have for you, Gina, before I open it up to the audience and do my little commercial break is, what is your definition for thriving and purpose? daily practice all right bingo yeah. okay thank you gina breedlove and real quickly i just want to say a couple of things before we invite you all in to join us next week we have the one and only 
Dr. Zalima Harris. This mm -hmm. woman is elegant. She's classy. She's sophisticated. And as a little girl in school, she said, I'm going to learn more than that teacher's talking about. She marched herself into the library and said, this is my activism and it is called education. I'm going to learn more than the teacher's content. And believe me, she's got a story to tell. She's going to talk to us next week, Wednesday, February 24th, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And for any of you that don't know, her daughter is Narissa Bond. So she is a P-flagger mom. And uh, we want to also let you know that we have also a lot of video library content. And one is Zalima. She talks about her childhood and growing up in the civil rights. You can go to our video library and find her. We love her so much that we said, man, we got to have you back, Zalima. You can find her, or I call her doctor, and she doesn't want me calling her doctor. She said, just call me Zalima. Uh, you can find her at indigenousways.org. I recommend everybody go to our video library and check her out. And you can also check out Gina Breedlove in the next 48 hours and share her sound healing messages with our with your friends and family. While you're at our website, you could also help us by uh, subscribing to our weekly newsletter. And below me is all of our social media pages. Please like and subscribe to them, especially now since you're here. Just go click, click, click. This really helps us keep going. Thank you very much. And uh, we're very grateful to our ASL interpreters. This access is free. Thanks to guess who? The Native American Advised Fund, Santa Fe Community Foundation, West Staff, and New Mexico Arts. Thank you, and we want to thank our beautiful individual donors that have jumped in to our movements on this platform. And we also want to thank our beautiful board members. We just have had two new board members join us today from the Comanche and the Navajo Nation. So mm -hmm. we've started this Navajo Nation um, deaf and hard of hearing uh, relief run that we're including with our Black Mountain run. We're also um, got some Navajo deaf representatives from the reservation that have joined us. Arletta Tolan, who is with us today. Hi, Arletta. She's zooming in from Lukachukai. And Dennis Long from Four Corners, Shiprock area of the Navajo Nation. We will be meeting these two, uh, our brothers and sisters, uh, March 18th and 19th, and doing a big drop off of PPE, wood, food. And uh, we're going to be serving the deaf natives of the McKinley County and surrounding areas. And this is going to be about 50 uh, deaf and hard of hearing members that we're looking at going and meeting with the help of Arletta and Dennis. Uh, with the support of all of you, we're able to do this. Please go to our donation page if you're interested or if you want to come and help us package these boxes. We would be so grateful. Help them stick them into U-Hauls. Uh, it's it's a lot of physical labor that even means more than money to us at this point because it's a lot of work. So mm -hmm. thank you all for being here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and tell you all come back in if you want to ask Gina about her events or if you want to book her in for an event or something like that, please do. And <laughs> we want to thank all of our um, uh, they, well, while you're turning on your email, David Gomez. While you're turning on your cameras, David Gomez, who is with us, he's my sister's colleague. He works for a native law firm. Both of them do. He says, 10 minutes with a drum will change your state of consciousness. Thank you, David. I love it when you come and drum with us. Gwen, our sister from DC area, she's a amazing musician. She says, wow, there she is. Gwen says, wow, the hair on my arms just stood up. You could have said that yourself, Gwen. And Cody says, our Lakota sister says, hey, Eve, how's it going, sister? Uh, Cody says, very beautiful. And she says, I feel like I have energy stuck in my throat so much. I feel it every day. Is there any technique to get it out or loosen the energy? Yes. Cool. I'll check out your website. Would you like to answer that? Oh, well, I would absolutely like to answer that. Hey, sister Cody, come on in. I would say um, humming to start, like a practice of humming. Um, mm, mm, you could make it a song if you wish, uh, but humming, um, humming with the intention, like focusing on your throat and perhaps resting your hand here and feeling the energy and the vibration of your own hum, humming into your throat and, um, and being curious. 
right? Being curious is um, a posture, a state, a presence of curiosity allows what may be lurking there to rise. Um, sometimes I have found it's the weight of the unsaid stuck in the throat. Um, it could be the apology not, not received, you know, uh, the rage not being able to be let or honored, um, the no not respected, got caught right here. Like there's, there's myriad reasons, but the humming and moving into um, a conscious practice of it and an allowing. And so, you know, I would say perhaps create some space, some privacy when you do it, uh, because it might and could very well lead to a good cry, a good wail, um, a good movement um, of the sound. Um, humming is a beautiful place to begin. Beautiful. Thank you for that question, Cody. I'm just going to finish up the questions here before I open it up. We got Jody Aranda saying hello, watching from Australia on social media. Michelle Redman, our uh, Navajo legal colleague, representative from the Navajo Nation, also our sister. She says, beautiful healing voice and energy. And Eve Wiggins. Yes, Eve. <laughs> Love you, Eve. Love you, Eve. She says, beautiful. And Linda Laporte or Laporte. Hello from New Hampshire. Love, 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 Gina. Narissa Bond, no way. Dr. Zalima's daughter's with us. Narissa, come back and sing for us. So beautiful, Narissa says to you. And Jamie Immerden, our sister from New York City. Love that tension and sound is free spirits. You have a beautiful light shining from within you and around you. Thank you. All right, thank you to our social media uh, participants from all over the world, as it turns out. Australia, woohoo, we're coming back soon. As soon as the gates open for us, we're there. Uh, everybody, let's not speak at the same time. Who wants to start? Go for it, Gwen. I'm in tears over here. That was so, so beautiful. Um, I just want to say that you were mentioned talking about sound and vibration coming into your body. Mm -hmm. This is, a, this is a recent um, discovery for me, even though I've been doing it for years and not really being conscious of it. I'm a drummer and a guitarist. And there's a different energy with the drums, but with the guitar, holding that piece of wood next to my body and playing mm -hmm. from it, for as long as I can remember has always calmed and centered me. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing since I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. And last year was very has been very rough on all levels, emotionally, spiritually. And I just find myself sitting with the guitar, no one else around except for maybe my doggies, and just playing something and feeling that vibration. And but I wasn't able to articulate, you mm -hmm. know, what was you know putting me there. And and listening to you and oh my God, your voice, listening just to the sound of your voice has just really giving me that aha that's what it is so I, I really appreciate that I've been trying to to catch up with that. I've been hearing your name in, in circles mm -hmm. um, for healing for for a while and I, I just dropped I'm in the midst of a move right now and I just had to drop everything and make sure I make this this particular session uh -huh. so that I I, I, I'm glad. I'm so glad, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be stalking you. Um, but <laughs> I'm kidding. But yes, definitely count me into your tribe. I'm, uh, okay. that, that was just quite incredible, and I had to find Narissa, my buddy Narissa. Uh, she she works in a lot of that same energy as well. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure she uh, tuned into this. But I'm just, I'm just like I said, I'm in tears right now. This has been wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Gina, if you ever need a drummer, Gwen's the one. She's a wicked percussionist, too. Okay. I want to thank you very much, Gwen. We miss and love you big time, and we're going to see you. I want to give voice to our sister, Eve, Eve Wiggins. Would you like to share some words, sister? Hmm. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, we can't hear you. I would like to share a short story. Is it back? Okay, it's on. Okay, this is Eve, just making sure the interpreter can see me. I would like to share a short story about my first experience with music and the guitar. Uh, it was an electric gushar. I plugged it into an amp and I wasn't sure how to use it. 
<laughs> and I didn't know what to do. So I just thought to myself, well, let me close my eyes. So I did, I put it in my hand and I started strumming and the people that were with me were like, hey, wow, that sounds really good. And I thought, well, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I just picked it up and closed my eyes. And they said, no, but you were strumming to a rhythm and you had, had it going. So that was my first experience where I didn't even plan it and prepare it. A second experience was at a wedding and they were arranging everything for the interpreter and the friend was getting to the wedding and I wasn't prepared and I was trying to understand the equipment that they had there and how to connect it. And when it was time for the show to start, they started singing and the interpreter was sitting right in front of me and I was watching and I started signing in sign language uh, to, to follow along with the music to the song. And as soon as I was able to hear the vibration from all the music that they connected, it just completely changed who I was and I became so much more animated and I felt more involved with the song and I couldn't even understand what made me change or what I said, but I think it was something to do with the vibration, the sound of the music hitting me, changed something in me. And so I did put that those, notes, those songs down in my notes so I could listen to it again in the future. But you're right, when it comes to vibration, that vibration helps the body release. And when you don't have that, then it gets all clogged up and, and kind of stammered like that. And, you know, I know I, I don't have the same type of sound that coming out of my voice like you do, but it's just beautiful what you're able to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Eve. And uh, I want to thank everyone here. Unfortunately, we are kind of out of time and we like to honor our interpreters when we tell them one hour, we want to end it at the top of the hour. And, uh, but I do want to say, Amber, do you want to say something real quick? I know you're a big fan of Gina's. I know you're a big fan of Gina's. If you want to say something, say it now. Okay, Amber. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Zoom, social media, all of those you that are going to be watching this in the future. And uh, we're going to be at everybody here live today. This is so important. This moment of healing is so important. Mom and Harry, we love you. We're going to be seeing you soon. Uh, Arletta on the reservation, we are going to be seeing you soon. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So we want to see you all every Wednesday at our Wisdom Circle next week for sure with Dr. Zalima Harris. Oh my God, I love that woman so much. And we want to lastly give it up for our sister Gina Breedlove. Woo! Thank you so much, Thank Tasha. You so much, everybody. Everybody have a day. blessed day. Thank Safe. You. Safe masks. Everybody give it up. ASL style. Woo! Thank you. We love you, Gina. Be safe. Thank you.